I'm back with Bassington's. Hope you're well. Hope you're keeping safe. A few weeks ago, when I was on top of a, a Phoenix rooftop, I said a guy contacted me who had a white dial and black dial a Rolex Daytona. And I said, Look, we do a review of them and uh, we have them here today. Um, interesting story background to the Daytona. Obviously, uh, Rolex have been manufacturing chronographs since the 1950s, uh, launched the Daytona in the 60s. But throughout the whole of the 60s, the 70s, and really up until 1988, when the Zenith Daytona uh, was launched, um, it really failed. It bombed. Um, it wasn't until 1988 when they put the Zenith El Primero movement into it that it took off and they've never ever looked back. It was the first time that it was an automatic movement placed in the watch as well. So they then sort of brought their own in-house movement uh, into the watch, the 4130 in the year 2000. And then in 2016, they hit the stratosphere with these watches. And here they are. I mean, they're absolutely stunning. I can't deny this. Um, it is without doubt the most talked about a watch this century. And I actually think it is the most hype watch this century. Um, so obviously this is the famous one. This is the white dial, more commonly known as the panda dial. I would say that the Rolex have moved away from the sort of tool sports uh, history with this watch. I mean, in the end of the day, as the name it derives from, it is meant to be a racing chronograph. Um, and really what they've done, they've put a lot of polish on this watch. So, you know, the center links are all polished. Uh, the sides are all polished. Um, it doesn't have an AV coating on it. The indices are a, a white diamond. They've made the legibility much better from the previous model. Um, the sub dials are in a contrasting color and it's easier to read. It does have an incredible movement in it. This is a, a really strong chronograph movement. You know, it's a column wheel with a vertical clutch. I mean, if I was to undo one of the pushes, and by the way, the pushes are silky smooth, that, oh, I mean, that is incredible. Um, but it's not got what it originally had, what it was designed for in the 1960s. I mean, the watch didn't sell throughout the 60s and 70s. There's so few vintage Daytonas out there because people just didn't buy them. Rolex didn't manufacture them. Um, I think this is more like a luxury dress piece statement item. In many ways, this uh, chronograph movement is wasted on a lot of the target audience because they're not going to use this watch as a true chronograph. Do I think Rolex could improve this watch? Um, yes, I do. I think, you know, when you look at the dial, it's very, very cluttered. You know, I don't want to read a novel. Uh, I want to, you know, either time something or tell the time. And it's got five layers of text there, plus Daytona, plus even Swiss made. And I find that it's not very legible to, uh, to, to tell the time or certainly to uh, use as a chronograph. Also, it's almost like got barnacles growing out the side of it. I mean, there's no need to have a crown guard on this. There's no need to have um, uh, screws on the on the pushes. It's just not needed. If they were to do away with that, make it clean and make it fresher, perhaps lose some of the text, get away with the polishing as well. You know, make it all brushed. I think they would have a great watch. Now, there's an interesting story behind this. Uh, when we went into um, lockdown, it was the second week of lockdown, and I got a call from a Rolex AD, and they offered me a Daytona. Now, you're going to say it wasn't one of these, I have to admit, it wasn't a steel model. It was a two-tone model um, with the black dial. And the, can't deny, part of my influence was that we were in lockdown, we couldn't get any Luro supermarkets, we couldn't get any pasta. And I thought, really don't want to spend all this money on a watch. But the second part was, it's kind of what I said earlier, the Daytona is very much a hyped up watch. It's a showy piece. And that's not what I'm about. If it had been perhaps another Rolex, I probably would have bought the watch. Uh, that had more of a history to it. I think this has really moved away from it. As I've said, I would really like in the next five or 10 years when Rolex look at this and redesign the watch to get back to what it was, perhaps to get back to when it was unsuccessful in the 60s, 70s and that early 80s period. Then I think 
they would have a truly great watch on its hands. Stay safe and stay tuned.